hey, I just thought I would tell you some of these things that are in the news about King Charles III that are kind of interesting and kind of gives you an outline of what he's really like and what's going on that they're reporting this week about him. Um, it says in the, um, let's see, hold on one second. It says, I thought I knew royal greed, but King Charles profiting from the assets of the dead is a disgusting new low. For decades, Parliament has been far too lenient about the royal family's finances. This a vigorous practice needs to end. As a royal author, I have come across plentiful examples of royal greed. It is a standard practice for the royals to seek to minimize their personal expenditure while maximizing their income from other sources, normally the public purse. But the revelation that King Charles III's personal slush fund, the Duchy of Lancaster, is having its already bulging coffers augmented by the estates of people who die in parts of England with historical links to the royal estate plums new depths of disgusting avarice. And like so many so-called traditions, the feudal hangover that is Homa Vacantia should have been consigned to the dustbin of history centuries ago, but it has been all too tempting for successive royals to preserve this royal fruit machine that pays out again and again. And over the past 10 years, it has collected more than 60 million pounds. Under this system, the Duchy of Cornwall, owned by Prince William, can claim the assets of people who die in Cornwall in a state without a will, if no relatives can be found. And Charles's Duchy of Lancaster does the same when their last known residence is within what was historically known as Lancashire County Palatine. Edward VIII found cash from those who died in a state in the boundaries of the duchy was sitting in an account in case claims arose against it. He simply stole a million pounds from it, leaving almost nothing in that kitty. George the Sixth did very well out of the royal servicemen who died ser uh, serving their country in the Second World War who originated from within the confines of the duchy and had no will, for king and country took on a whole new meaning. As disquiet about the practice of Bona Vacantia grew after the war, the royals announced that the monies collected would henceforth be given to charity after processing costs had been deducted, of course. And yet a Guardian investigation now reveals that matters are even worse than, have been, uh, than they've been led to believe. And put bluntly, we have been lied to. Monies we all thought were going to charity have instead been used to improve properties owned by the duchy, increasing the income stream that flows from them into Charles's pockets. We have the most expensive monarchy in Europe by far in terms of state support and one that benefits from unique tax treatment available to nobody else. No inheritance tax is paid. The so-called private estates of the duchies of Cornwall and Lancaster are, no, are not private enough to pay corporation tax or capital gains tax. Even income tax is only paid voluntarily, if at all. No receipts have ever been made public. The civil list, which in 2011 gave the royals uh, 7.9 million pounds a year, was replaced after palace lobbying with the sovereign grant, which 12 years later is up to 86 million pounds a year. Over the centuries, the royals have continually bleated poverty and demanded more money from the taxpayer, while at the same time refusing point-blank to reveal the extent of their accumulated wealth. 
They even refused to provide this information to the last government that seriously tried to dig into this. And the Labour government of the mid 1970s with the then Home Secretary, Roy Jenkins, pursuing the matter. Back in Queen Victoria's reign, the government was told she was desperately short of cash to undertake her duties, so a big uplift was provided, and she was not short of cash, and the money provided by the then government was instead used to buy Sandringham and Balmoral. I recognize that behavior from my time in Parliament, it's called fiddling your expenses. My calculation suggests that the king is worth much, as much as two billion pounds and probably more. The bulk of this has come from excessive generosity on behalf of the taxpayer, either through direct handouts or indirectly through unique tax exemptions. But antiquated and indefensible arrangements such as bona vacantia have played their part too. Parliament, which over the decades has been far too differential, far too trusting, far too easygoing, needs to get a grip. The disgusting existence of royal windfalls from dead people should be ended forthwith. The duchies of Cornwall and Lancaster should be transferred immediately to the publicly owned crown estate. They only escaped from being transferred along with other royal lands in 1760 because they were then deemed worthless. Plainly, this is no longer the case, and the Public Accounts Committee should begin a thorough investigation into the funding and wealth of the royals. Monarchists should worry. Opening the doors on royal finances and practices will reveal a terrible stench. And this was by Norman Baker. He was the Liberal Democrat MP for Lewes from 1997 to 2015. And this is an opinion piece, but it's in several articles that I located on this same subject. And so there was not just that accounting of money coming from, you know, the estates of people who've died, but we also had the situation where he took money from Osama bin Laden's family. And I would like to read that to you as well. And... The BBC did an article on this. Hold on one second. I'm trying to do this kind of live here. But Prince Charles accepted, and now King Charles, accepted one million pounds from Osama bin Laden's family. Now they say, you know, this is money that should have gone to the 9-11 victims' families. And they did not get this money. So... It's kind of disgusting, really. But it says, Then Prince of Wales accepted payment of one million pounds from the family of Osama bin Laden, uh, the Sunday Times reports from the BBC. Prince Charles, now King Charles, accepted the money from two of Osama bin Laden's half-brothers in 2013, two years after the Al-Qaeda leader was killed. The... Then Prince of Wales Charitable Fund received the donation. Clarence House said it had been assured by the Prince of Wales Charitable Fund, the PWCF, that through due diligence, a thorough due diligence had been conducted and the decision to accept the money lay with the trustees. Any attempt to characterize it otherwise is false it told the BBC, and Clarence House also said it disputed a number of points made in the newspaper's article. Bin Laden was disowned by his family in 1994, and there's no suggestion that his half-brothers had links to his activities. However, part of their family was meeting in Washington, D.C. at the time of the attacks, so they were secretly flown out of the country 
And it says that according to the report, then Prince Charles accepted the money from Baker bin Laden, who heads the wealthy Saudi family, and Baker's brother, Shafiq, following a meeting with Baker at Clarence House. So, isn't that nice to know that they were invited to the royal household? The heir to the throne took the money, despite objections from advisors at Clarence House and the Prince of Wales Charitable Fund, the, the Sunday Times report citing multiple sources. However, Sir Ian Cheshire, chairman of the Prince of Wales Charitable Fund, told the newspaper that the 2013 donation was agreed carefully considered by the five trustees at the time. Due diligence was conducted with information sought from a wide range of sources, including government, Sir Ian added. The decision to accept the donation was taken wholly by the trustees, and any attempt to suggest otherwise is misleading and inaccurate. The Prince of Wales Charitable Fund um, awards grants to UK registered nonprofit organizations to deliver projects in the UK, Commonwealth, and overseas. No rule has been broken, no law has been broken, all appropriate checks were carried out, and even the Foreign Office was called upon to give its opinion. It cleared the donation. So, how is this front page news? A source at the Prince of Wales Charitable Fund told the BBC that the sins of the father, that's Osama bin Laden, should not disqualify other members of the family from making a donation, which makes sense. However, doesn't it stand to reason that all of the people who perished in 9-11 should be the beneficiaries of that money? But equally, did Prince Charles who's now King Charles, or his inner circle, really think it was a good idea to take money from the Bin Ladens? Or did they think that it was fine so long as if it was never made public? Because once it was public, however many checks were made and rules were followed, it was always going to look horrible. Just like the enormous cash donation from the former Qatari Prime Minister or the letter from then Prince Charles's close friend and aide promising a knighthood to a Saudi citizen who had promised and made substantial donations. Ministers and members of parliament are, in the end, governed by the ballot box. The royal family derives its position and authority from a different place, from a settled acceptance by the public that overall they bring credit to the country. Does a donation from the Bin Ladens, however remote from the evil doing of a disowned son, fit into this model of monarchy? Osama Bin Laden was top of the U.S. most wanted list and was believed to have been ordered uh, to have ordered the terrorist attacks on New York in Washington on September 11, 2001, which killed almost 3,000 people, including 67 Britons. He was killed by the U.S. forces in 2011. A Prince of Wales Charitable Fund source told the BBC that though the name Bin Laden has a very unhappy history, the sins of the father should not be visited on the rest of the family, which is an eminent one in the region. The source added that the donation had been cleared by the Foreign Office. So this was not the first time that then Prince Charles or his charity have been um, scrutinized over its donations. It was reported um, when this article was written, it was reported that last month that then Prince Charles accepted a suitcase containing a million euros in cash from a former Qatari prime minister one of the three cash donations totaling around 2.5 million pounds. Clarence House said at the time that donations from the Sheikh were passed immediately to one of the Prince's charities and all the correct processes were followed. The Charity Commission later decided against launching an investigation into that donation. In February, the Metropolitan Police began an investigation into claims the charity offered honors help to a Saudi citizen. 
Clarence House said that the prince had no knowledge of the alleged offer of honors or British, British citizenship on the basis of donation to his charities. To millions of Saudis, the name bin Laden is totally innocent, innocuous. I'm sorry, innocuous. In the West and much of the rest of the world, it will forever be associated with 9-11 terror attacks in 2001. But in Saudi Arabia, it is a byword for the Jeddah-based construction firm that used newfound oil wealth to fund mosques, palaces, and other buildings by royal decree. The family were not originally Saudi. They came from a part of southern Yemen, the Had Ramout, uh, that has produced many of the Jeddah most successful and wealthy entrepreneurial families. Osama, one of many sons of the company's founder who immigrated from Yemen in the early 20th century, was long known as the black sheep of the family. He spent much of the 1980s in Afghanistan helping the Mujahideen fight the invading Soviet army, and essentially he was on the same side then as the CIA and Pakistan. Well, there you go. The CIA was involved. They knew about the hijackers before the attacks. They knew about the bin Laden family because the bin Laden family, as I said, they were visiting here in the United States before the attack happened and secretly flown out. But by the 1990s, he had become a radical Islamic extremist and family disowned him in 1994. Osama bin Laden then moved first to Sudan and soon after Afghanistan, and the rest is history. So these are really a couple of things that are pretty bad. <laughs> and we also had the same story about how King Charles is secretly profiting from dead citizens' land. And let me read this. I have to enlarge it here. King Charles is making money from the deaths of thousands of his subjects in England's northwest. The Guardian has revealed those people's assets are secretly being added to a commercial property empire managed by the king's hereditary estate. The Duchy of Lancaster is an estate that brings in huge profits for Charles and has gathered tens of millions of pounds over the past few years thanks to an ancient system. In this area of the UK, financial assets called Bona Vacantia belonging to people who died without known next of kin or a will are taken by the duchy. It's collected more than 60 million um, pounds, which is $124 million over the past 10 years, claiming that after costs are deducted, the revenue is donated to charity. But internal documents seen by the Guardian reveal only a fraction is going to charity with the bulk of the funds financing the renovation of the king's properties, then rented out. The system applies to an, in an area known during the Middle Ages as Lancashire County, Palatine, ruled by a duke and today including Lancashire parts of Greater Manchester, Merseyside, Cheshire, and Cumbria. The duchy policy from 2020 enabled the king's estate officials to use the funds for his profit generating portfolio, acknowledging that this could mean an incidental boost to Charles' personal income. Three sources close to the duchy confirmed revenue collected from dead citizens was being used to upgrade properties, with one revealing insiders refer to it as a slush fund and free money. The system is helping rental properties become profitable, meaning the king receives tens of millions of pounds each year, which Buckingham Palace says is his private income. Charles receives uh, 26 million pounds from the Duchy of Lancashire, or Lancaster earlier this year. And the Guardian identified dozens of those whose money had been taken by the estate after their deaths 
with several living in social housing or rundown properties. Their surviving friends were astonished to learn how their assets were being used, labeling the practice disgusting, not ethical, and shocking. Buckingham Palace declined to comment, while a duchy spokesman implied that the king endorsed the system continuing after the queen's death to protect and preserve qualifying buildings for the future. What is Bona Vacantia? In much of England and Wales, the assets of those who die without a will or relatives are placed in the treasury and spent on public services. The Latin name Bona Vacantia means vacant goods, but two duchies belonging to the royal family can collect these assets from those who die in two English regions, one in the Duchy of Cornwall, which collects Bona Vacantia from its deceased residents and creates profits for the heir to the throne. Last year, the duchy passed to Prince William. The other is the Duchy of Lancaster, which Charles inherited from Queen Elizabeth after her death. Both duchies manage farmland, castles, hotels, warehouses, and many other properties, and neither pay corporation or capital gains tax, meaning they've generated more than 1.2 billion pounds in profit in the past 60 years. The Duchy of Lancaster's accounts show only 15% of the millions it has collected over the last 10 years has gone to charity. A spokesperson for the duchy said that when Charles came to the throne, he doubled down on his late mother's approval of the practice for restoration and repair. The king reaffirmed that money from Bona Vacantia should not benefit the privy purse, but should be used primarily to support local communities, protect the sustainability and biodiversity of the land, and preserve public and historic properties across the Duchy of Lancaster states. This includes the restoration and repair of qualifying buildings in order to protect and preserve them for future generations. The spokesperson said that before donating to charity, the Duchy set aside money in a late claims fund just in case any surviving relatives of the deceased came forward. The cost of administering Bona Vacantia and any costs associated with the upkeep of public buildings and those of archaeological, I mean architectural importance is also deducted. So, in my opinion, that money should go to any remaining living relatives and not into the hands of somebody who's not a relative. And that's just from my own experience dealing with stuff. So isn't this interesting that all this money is coming to him from dead people? <laughs> um, anyway, I thought this was kind of interesting information and I really thought that you would be interested in hearing it considering that Israel may be considering him as the anointed one and considering that he's the top spokesman for the WEF Israel's involved with um, Yuval Noah Harari is Jewish and part of the WEF so interesting too that somebody said that Elon Musk is you know, he's been in Israel and he's talking about the brain chip, Starlink. So that's interesting because Israel wants to be in the forefront of technology and combine their technology with the UK, with the seven year trade agreement they made with Britain, with the UK. So all of this is, you know, very interesting information. So anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you and um, see what you thought about it. So anyway, I will talk to you in the next video. Shalom for now.